Oh, did, did he just throw an egg? Did someone just see an egg shoot into the sky like that? Hello, and welcome to another episode of Chaos Craft. This week, we introduced the concept of a target neuron, which we've done previously, but I really wanted to drill it home. So, I set them to work tracking chickens, and I built several chicken factories. What is a chicken factory, you might ask? Well, it's a block that spawns a certain number of chickens. The first time I tried doing that, it spawned them in the ground and caused the game to glitch out. The second time I tried it, it caused the game to glitch out because it spawned them into the block itself and killed them immediately. The third time I kind of got it right, but not quite right. Eventually I got it dialed in so that we can control it and each full factory would keep a maximum of 10 chickens alive at any given time. This would allow the bots plenty of targets to go find and seek out with their tracking system. You can see here that if one chicken dies, another one spawns up and takes its place. The targeting system has three pieces of data that it feeds into the neural net. You can see that data in the upper left hand corner right there, it's the distance the delta in pitch and the delta in yaw. So you notice that if it's facing directly at the creature, the target pitch gets really close to zero and the target yaw gets really close to zero, but if it's facing away from it, those numbers go either up or down. Zero means you're facing directly at the creature. By the way, this is me controlling this one just to test it. They were a little slow to learn at first, and after a while of debugging, I found out that I was using the old git look vector which doesn't really apply much to these guys. That just has to do with their heads and where they're facing, but it doesn't actually factor into the logic. So I had to switch it up. And when I was testing, I decided to switch from the multiple chickens to just a single B in the center, which you can see here. Mainly because tracking one object is easier to debug than tracking, technically, I think it's 50 objects we had. After a while, during our Friday live stream, I saw some odd behaviors that raised some questions. Now this is an interesting behavior. I kind of want to... They're tracking the chicken almost. I mean, they're not, but... No, he's straightened out. Is he circling the chicken? As it turns out, they did indeed figure out how to track the chicken because I forgot to change their preset neurons that they start with from chicken to B when I changed the target. Though I had changed it in the fitness function, so they actually learned how to track chickens without even being correctly rewarded for it. Here's a clip of me figuring this out. Ah, uh, nuts. I got a pretty good idea why they're blind now. And uh, I'm gonna cry. That's wasted a day and a half of our time now. Mother of Pearl. Well, at least this should get a lot easier. And it did, actually. Once we had flipped back to the real neuron so I could actually see the bee, it actually started learning very quickly. It wasn't too long before we saw them start to circle the bee and get closer and closer to actually being able to tag it. Here's a clip of one of the higher scoring bots. Explain in a second. Let me get it. Yes, he's going for it. Am I on? My audio's on. Yeah. Yes, and he's scoring. Ooh, that's good. Oh, my God. I'll explain exactly why I'm excited about this and why I had a really rough last 24 hours. But he's going for the bee. And it's literally a bumblebee, yes. Yes. This is good video. God, I almost walked away from this. Once we had fixed the neuron issue, it only took five generations for this guy to learn how to do this behavior. Quite impressive. They learned extremely fast. One thing that we did have an issue with is that they had trouble stopping and staring at the bee. They'd continue to move. So I decided to try mixing up our activator functions. For those of you guys that don't know, 
what an activator function is. An activator function is what determines when a neuron fires off. So we can feed it a value like the distance, which could be way above zero to one. And this will help us flatten out to a value within zero to one. So if it's anything bigger than this number here, it's gonna be just one. And if it's, let's just say it's two, it's gonna be probably like 0.7 and so on. We wanted to try other activator functions like ReLU or the tan H, which looks a lot like the sigmoid function and the Gaussian, which will only activate when you're within certain ranges so we can focus. Ideally, when they hit zero, like they're looking right at it, when the delta pitch and delta yaw is zero, it'll be at its highest. So I added the ability on chaos and at the back end to randomly, when it creates the neuron, pick the activator function from a list of activator functions I've given it that I've programmed into chaos craft. Unfortunately, right when I pushed that code, we had some major fires. I was maxing out what DynamoDB could give us in a cost-efficient manner, and I needed to find a better solution. Right there, you can see we're getting throttled quite a bit. And so, I really like MongoDB, and Amazon Web Services, which we're using for this, has a wonderful managed MongoDB cluster. Unfortunately for us, the starting price of that is $200 a month, and we're not quite there with the Patreon yet but we'd be dead in the water without it. So I figured out a way to bite the bullet and we started to migrate into MongoDB. Currently, we're in the process of that migration. I'm optimistic that I can have it done in less than a week, but that might just be optimism, we'll find out. I do have a lot of the tests already passing, but we're not fully there. Last night, it still had some issues. So here's a preview of what's to come next. King of the Hill. We're gonna put him in here, set the target to be the top, and see who can climb the hill and keep the top occupied for the longest amount of time. So that'll be our next episode. Special thanks to, I believe it was TNT Outburst for uh, building this. If it's not, I'm gonna feel like a real idiot, but thank you. Now, thank you all for watching, and to reward you for watching this long, I will show you this clip of them throwing eggs like machine guns. As always, I appreciate it when you guys leave a comment. I try to respond to every single one of them, but sometimes YouTube doesn't give me notifications, but usually I do. Special thanks to all our patrons. Uh, you guys are great. Can't do this without you. Everybody else, uh, I love it when you like, share, subscribe, and uh, share our important work with the chicken machine gun that accidentally happened with the world. So thanks. Cheers.